Olá outra vez! This video is part 2 of a series on how to read and write singla. Without further ado, I present to you the singla consonants. Now that we've got the vowels down, let's start listing the consonants. To the 10 vowel symbols, we are adding 23 consonants to complete the basic singla alphabet. To the untrained eye, singla characters all look the same. However, we shall divide the consonants into groups with similar shapes, easing the learning process. The n we learned before, together with k and t, form the first group. Let us shape like a sleeping number three. Katana. K, t, and n are all shaped like a three. Can you see it? K is the most striking. After drawing the three, draw two perfectly round circles. Almost like... The difference between t and n is the starting position of the final stroke. For t, make sure it appears to be pointing down. For n, point it up, like shown. Examples of words using these letters. Can. Eat. Can. Notice the hal kirima on the first N and how the final syllable tends to be completely unstressed, so relaxed. Can. I'd like to introduce you to schwa. He represents a completely unstressed vowel. He doesn't even care if it's upside down, he's so chill. Cat. Means ugly. Well, cat. Means bush knife. The difference is a double consonant. It's a very subtle difference, and one that I often miss here, not on purpose, okay? It's important to pronounce consonants correctly in order to get your meaning across. I'll mention now that although T is romanized as TH, it's pronounced T. Just place your tongue right behind your teeth. We'll get back to this one soon, as it's not a distinction seen in European languages. Finally, there's CONNINE. I'm not eating. I think we're starting to get an idea how vowels and consonants communicate with one another. The next group is a small upper swirl, in which we can find T, V, CH, and our complex vowel E. In terms of graphemes, it's almost like a monster evolution. They're all relatively simple to draw, but so similar. Let's identify the differences. T is simply a counterclockwise swirl. For V, we start with a circle, then complete the swirl. For CH, after the circle, there's a small horizontal stroke, and then the swirl. E. We cover this in the vowels, it's exactly like CH, but there's an additional stroke on the lower side of its tail. The sound T from this letter is different from the T we saw before, and different from the English sound T for tango. In English, the letter T usually represents the phoneme T, which in the diagram would be somewhere around number 2. In singular, this letter splits into two. T, pronounced by placing your tongue behind your upper teeth, and T, pronounced by really curving your tongue to the top of your mouth. For a singular speaker, the difference is obvious, but for a learner, this difference is very subtle and will require you to tune your ear. In any case, correct tongue placements should be our first step towards mastering these two sounds. If it helps make you feel any better, I've been aware of it for a year and I still struggle to identify the difference. Let's look at some examples. Tata means father, while tata means bald. Now I know that most dads tend to turn bald, but there's no reason to discriminate. Make sure you use the correct T. Tongue behind the teeth. Ta -ta. Notice the long vowels on the T's represented by the semicircles. Ta -ta. Both vowels are short and the second T sounds slightly stronger. T. In Ta -ta. You also notice that the first T has a line on top. This is a halkirima, a vowel stopper in disguise, meaning this is a T not the T. If we look at chuti, which means tiny, you'll see that to represent the T sound, there is no break, the line is continuous. Don't let yourself be fooled. All consonants in a small upper swirl group don't raise any flags, they're all in it to catch you out. T is represented like this with two lines, not with a flag. An example using letter V is Vavanava, the verb to grow. Finally, a word including E is ek, meaning one while ek means with. Double consonants are very common in singular. I told you we would be seeing more of that flag. The next group of letters is a large upper swirl. We have the vowel O and the letters B and M. To draw them, we start with a circle in the center, then draw a clockwise inner swirl and finish in a counterclockwise outer swirl. O reminds us of a fancy W, whereas M is round, like the letter O in the Latin script. Instead of starting in the center, B starts in the bottom left corner, but the trajectory is the same. 
O means yes. Na means no for completion's sake. O is by far the most commonly spoken word starting with O. Mama means I, so you will be hearing this a lot too. But means rice. Mama but kanava means I eat rice or I'm eating rice. Singhala is an SOV language, subject, object, verb. The action is always the last thing to be specified. Kanava is the infinitive of the verb to eat, the same we used previously in the form kane na, I'm not eating, the negative version of the verb. Spoken singhala does not require us to conjugate the verbs in the present tense for any person, but there is a slight change for negative forms. In this group, letters are zigzags. We have ga, ha, and sh, like in wish. Ga is so basic, composed of a clockwise and a counterclockwise half circle. Ha starts with a little circle and follows suit. And sh is the same as ga, but with a little circle at the end, like a tail in between its legs, as if he's ashamed. <laughs> Gaha means tree. Hatu means mushroom. Some letters, t included, don't show a fish hook on the u sound, instead they have a tail. This is not common and confusing for learners, and will be covered in detail in the next video of this series. Shant means peaceful. Sh is not a part of the pure singular alphabet, but it still appears in quite a few words. Hinava is the verb to smile. If we compare with kanava before, we can see that words ending in nava are always verbs. Ah, yes, sir, the. The group we've all been waiting for. I was divided. Do they look more like a person's behind or a lady's voluptuous? In any case, these letters are all characterized by two perfect circles in their lower half. To draw ye, we start with two semicircles and then with an earring on the right side. S has earrings on both sides, so start with a circle and a stroke and then complete the character exactly like ye. For d, we start like s, but on the right side we carry on over the head in a continuous curve. Stuti. You'll be saying this a lot, it means thank you. Notice the tu with the tail instead of the fish hook again. Satuta. It's happiness. Remember the difference between t and t. Satuta. Doctor. Is a loan word from English, meaning, you guessed it, doctor. However, in Sinhala, the letter d is different from d for delta. Instead, place your tongue on the roof of your mouth when you pronounce it. In the same places, t. Once again, the difference is quite subtle. But as long as you place your tongue in the right place, the sound should come out correctly. D. Adia. Means a foot used to measure length. In this category, we find the vowels a, u, and the consonant d. This d is pronounced by placing your tongue just behind your teeth, like d in English. Same place as t in Sinhala, but voiced. To draw the consonants from simplest to most complex, we have the u, resembling a reverse number 5. D is characterized by a little curve at the bottom, resembling the cedilha found in some European languages. And a is the most complex, finishing with a stroke up and a little curve. If we superimpose the letters, we can clearly see that the curve in the letter u is larger than the other two letters. Ude means morning, with a long d. Ad means today, while ade means half. Notice a subtle difference. Ad ude means this morning. Just be mindful of the difference in the and the. They are different graphemes for a reason. We've already seen the long e, the vowel. It's a very weird shape. Re is drawn exactly like e, but without the two dots, resembling an eye with a single eyelash. The little circle is the n sound at the end of sing, but without the g. Sing, not sin. Sing at the back of the throat. Yesterday is e. Both vowels are long vowels. Hari is a very common expression. It means good. Sarama is what every man aspires to wear one day. Known in English as a sarong, is a traditional attire for men worn from Sri Lanka all the way to Indonesia. Nangi means younger sister, and is an endearing way to treat younger girls of the same generation or younger generations. Nangi, sing. Notice the same sound. Another example of ng is Lanka. As you just saw, this letter is L, and any other lower swirl also represents the sound L. The first L starts with a minus sign, followed by a counterclockwise swirl. The second L starts with an inner clockwise semicircle, curves over in our favorite shape, 
and comes down parallel to the first curve. In ancient Sinhala, these two letters used to be pronounced differently. But in modern Sinhala, there is no distinction, yet the spelling is kept for cultural and historic reasons. Lanka is the correct spelling for, well, Lanka. Lankika means Sri Lankan. There are not many words using the second grapheme. Even Lamaya, meaning child, may be seen spelt with la instead, as there is no distinction between the two las in modern spoken Sinhala. Other useful words include Lassana, meaning beautiful. Notice the double consonant within the first syllable, lasana. Loku means big. Loku amma. Big mom is the name given to your oldest aunt from your dad's side. There are three pot-shaped letters. Pa, j, like the English janitor, and sh, like shut. Yes, there are two ways to write sh, and none of them is part of the pure singular alphabet. I'll explain this in the next video of this series. Like in la, both graphemes were necessary in ancient Sinhala to distinguish two different pronunciations. But in modern spoken Sinhala, they are both pronounced the same. P is a pot with two handles. Start with a small circle, curve around to the right side and draw the other handle. Leave a very small gap between both handles. J is drawn the same way as P, but with a longer handle on the right side, like a frying pan. Sh is also drawn the same as P, but you need to add some food to the pot. Pol means coconut, the most common fruit on the island. Pa is a very common phoneme, seen in pot, meaning book, pan, meaning pen, but most importantly, paripu, dal curry, traditionally cooked in coconut milk, a staple of Sri Lankan cuisine. Juni and Juli are the months of June and July. Since shu is not part of the pure alphabet, there are not many words starting with shu. Sure is an English loanword meaning sure. This is the final group, the clockwise swirl. There are only two letters in this group, E, which we already knew from before, reminiscent of the number three, and N, which, say it with me, in modern Sinhala is pronounced the same as N. We finish in style with the most complex letter. This letter just screams posh. A swirl followed by a dash was not enough. It needed some scribbles to its right to set itself apart from the others. As far as examples come, Inneva is the verb to be at a place, usually used as a verb to stay. Once again, the ending nava is used for a verb. Tani is trekkel. Kitul tani or kitul trekkel is a traditional sweetener native to the island and present before the introduction of sugarcane to the country. Something you must try is mikiri, buffalo curd, a thick yogurt, with kitul pani, a traditional pudding. Another word using na is kannadi, a pair of glasses. Damn that double na consonant. And finally, Ivarai. We're finished. Yes, literally. So today we covered all the vowels and 23 of the consonants using singula. There are a couple of things I did not cover. For example, you still can't read this. It reads Sri Lanka. But that will be covered in a future video of this series. The best way to memorize these characters is by using them. I would recommend just texting secret messages to your friends. Both Android and Apple have Singhala characters. Just go to your settings, keyboards, and install them for free. In the next video of this series, I'll cover the rest of the Suda set of the Singhala alphabet, which includes constant fusions, as well as sounds that are not as frequent, like Fa and Nya, as well as the Mahaprana letters, used to write Pali and Sanskrit. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Hopefully this will set you up to accompany me in Dinusha's Singhala lessons that we will be uploading soon. Ghingen! See you next time.